Hey, Miss Sarah. Hope you and John are good tonight. Mr. Glenn, hope you and your family are doing well. Miss Shelby, hope you and Mike and the family are doing good. Just got a little Saturday afternoon Alabama scenery to get us started. Beautiful day. Hey, Leanne, hope you and Donald and the family are doing good and enjoying a beautiful Saturday. There's Miss Angie going to keep me on task. All right. Make sure everybody's uh, having a good Saturday. Beautiful, beautiful sunset about to be here in Sweet Home, Alabama. Hey, Miss Linda, hope you and Mr. Roger are doing good this evening. And there's Miss Sandra. Hey, Miss Sandra, hope you're doing good. Miss Janice, hope you and Bobby and the family are well. Margaret, hey, Martin, Margaret, I hope you and Wayne and everybody's doing good up there in Cottlesville. Uh, thank y'all all for checking in tonight. Just gonna give just a minute or so some pretty scenery for a uh, beautiful spring evening here. It's Saturday for Mama's Day. We're excited about the uh, beautiful weather we've had. It's going to start warming up real soon, I'm sure, though. Hey, Miss Wilma, hope you're doing good today. Thank you for checking in, as always. We'll give just a minute or so. Hey, Miss Sue, hope you're doing well this evening. It's a beautiful, beautiful Saturday evening. Take just a minute. If you got prayer requests, praise reports, please feel free to share. Say hello to a friend maybe you haven't got to talk to during the time of quarantine and social distancing and uh, shelter in place and safer at home and all these different uh, uh, words we've had to learn what they mean lately so anyhow uh, there's miss carla i hope you and jim and your family are doing good tonight thank you all for checking in okay i'm gonna go ahead and get started here real quick so we can uh, uh get you back on your way for saturday evening I appreciate you checking in. As I said, it's a Saturday for Mother's Day. So we do want to say happy day, uh, Mother's Day Eve to all of our moms and grandmoms. We'll be honoring y'all tomorrow and service the best we know how virtually. Won't be able to do that in person this time, but uh, we're going to still honor our mothers and thank you so much for y'all checking in uh, tonight. Uh, I do want to remind you tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, uh, Sunday school is going to be taught live right here on Facebook Live, so be sure to check in. Worship will be at 10. We look forward to seeing you there. And we're excited about the worship tomorrow and believe that God's going to use it to do great things. And want to encourage you to be sure you're checking in, and that way we all stay connected during this time. I uh, also want to remind you that, of course, as you know, our governor did relax some of our uh, restrictions that we've had on us. Uh, still, you know, means we've got some things to get ready and some things to work through. Uh, we are closer to meeting in person than we have been since this thing started. I haven't met in person since March 15th. So tomorrow will be our eighth Sunday in a row that we've been at just online only. So tomorrow afternoon I'll be meeting with our leadership guys and we'll be putting together uh, some more preparation and putting together a plan uh, to be able to share with you hopefully by tomorrow evening or uh, maybe Monday morning at the latest of exactly what all that means. So we appreciate your prayers because our goal is to glorify God in everything we do. But at the same time, we are very concerned about you and taking care of you and making sure that we uh, are doing the things necessary uh, to protect everybody the very best we can while at the same time moving toward meeting again because that's very important. So we'll be making those announcements real soon. Appreciate your prayers for wisdom and guidance, okay? I uh, just want to mention a few words to you from uh, the Gospel of Matthew tonight. I hope that will encourage you. And the Gospel of Matthew, tucked in right in the early chapter 5, 6, and 7, is what we know as to what we have called the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount, as you know, if I shared with you many times as a church, is the greatest sermon ever preached by the greatest preacher who ever lived. When I first became your pastor four years ago next week, if you can believe that, four years have already passed. Some of you say it feels like four days. Some of you say it feels like 40 years. But nevertheless, whichever way you are, I want you to know I'm grateful to God for every day. So uh, nevertheless, um, 
I began speaking to you from Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 and began working through what we call the Beatitudes. We took one a week for several weeks and we just it, we were in Matthew chapter 5. The first 16 verses uh, went on for some, you know a few months that we walked through those and I felt that God led me to do that because it helped me to kind of set a foundation of where we're going because I really believe everything rises and falls on leadership and I believe everything that we attempt is directly tied to our attitude. Our activity is always uh, undergirded by attitude. So really wanted to make sure we worked on our heart set and our mindset and got focused for what God was going to lead us to do. And boy, he's challenged us in these years, but I want you to know uh, we've yet to see all that God desires to do and the challenges he has for us to stretch us, mold us, and make us more like Jesus. So in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus began talking about those Beatitudes, and then he got down to a portion there about verse 11, where he talked about, on verse 10, 11, and 12, he talked about not being surprised when you're persecuted or when you have difficulties because those things are going to happen. And he said, you need to rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, in verse 12. They, he said they persecuted the prophets who were before you, so don't be shocked when you face difficulty and even persecution from outside the church and even sometimes from within, and that's really difficult. But at the end of that, Jesus talks to us about what it's really all about. I mean, here's really the mission, really the heartbeat of Jesus for his children and for his bride, the church, in verse 13. Let me share a few of these verses with you, and I'm going to make a couple observations and I hope will be an encouragement to you on Saturday night as you prepare to worship tomorrow. He said, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under foot by men. He said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light. Listen, I like this. To all who are in the house, means everybody in the family sees the light, and those in the presence of the light. In verse 16, he ends this section by saying this. He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and that it may glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, let me just make a few observations, and I hope will help you because I want to encourage you because we all need it. I need it. You need it. Everybody you see needs it. The truant Kathy used to say, how, they asked him, said, how can you tell if a person needs encouraging? He said, if they're breathing. So every breathing person needs encouragement. So these words really encourage us. Two things he says we are. Jesus said we're salt, and Jesus said we're light. Both of them are very important. In those days, salt was used as a preservative. Uh, salt was used to make sure that meat, things like that would last because, you know, they didn't have a, you know, a refrigerator and big double doors and a freezer on one side and a refrigerator on the other. They didn't have those things, so they had, had other methods of preservation. So we bring preservation, but we also bring flavor and bring vitality. Um, I know you probably have somebody in your family, and I do, and I, they'll remain nameless at this point, but there are people in your family who sometimes before they even taste food, they'll go ahead and put some salt on it because their belief is that a little more salt never hurts. They like salt, and I like it, but I understand, you know, I always taste it first because some things are already got enough, you know, but nevertheless, to a saltaholic, it's never enough. But salt brings flavor. It, it brings vitality. It brings energy. It's like, I like pinto beans, and I bet some of you do. It's my favorite bean. You may have another you like better. I like pinto beans, and pinto beans are wonderful. You cook them, but when you put just enough salt on them, I'm telling you, it makes them a whole lot better. It really makes brings out the taste and the flavor. And what Jesus is saying is for the world, we are that flavor agent. We are that preservative. And he has put us in this world for that purpose. And then he said this. He said, you're the light of the world. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing we got to understand. I have no light of my own, 
and neither does any person. We can't generate light. We don't have any within us. But the reason we're able to be the light of the world is because the light lives in us. And we literally reflect his glory. It's much like the moon. We've talked about this before, how the moon, uh, if you know at night, people go out and look and say, well, the moon is shining bright tonight. But truthfully, the moon has no light source of its own. What it is merely doing is reflecting the light of the sun. <laughs> That's what he's put you and I in this world for, is to reflect the light of the sun. He said, you are the light of the world. So as we reflect his light, we, draw, we are able to draw and lead people to him and not ourselves. He said, you're the light of the world, and a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So important for churches to understand today, ours and every church, every local congregation that you know, our responsibility is to reflect the light of the gospel because a real uh, a church that is on fire for Jesus and following the Son of God and trusting the Word of God and believing that He is leading us where He wants us to go, those churches are shining a light that cannot be suppressed even by the darkness of the world. When things are darkest, the light of the gospel shines the brightest. Never forget that. And then he ends this section by saying this. He gets personal. Let your light, you take that year and put your name there. Let your light so shine before men. Why? That they may see your good works and that it may glorify your Father who is in heaven. You know, it reminds me the truth of the matter about the gospel is, is it's all about him and it's not about me. See, when we let our light shine and we reflect the light of the gospel, we're saying it's all about him and it's not about us. He says, let your light so shine before men. That means in the presence of darkness, let your light shine. That they may see something is different about you. See, I just believe, old country preacher used to tell me this a long time ago, that when they tried to explain how somebody could be such a, a hard-living sinner and all of a sudden become a, just a glory-bound, spirit-filled saint, he says, how does that happen? An old country preacher used to say, well, it's simple. When heaven moves in, hell moves out. And I praise God for that. He said, let your light so shine in the darkness. Don't let it be suppressed that they may see your good works. See, good works doesn't save us, but good works is a product of a saved person. Very important. James made that very clear. He said, I will show you my faith by my works. I don't do works in order to be saved, but because of the finished work of Calvary of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm able to do good things because of him, not because of me. And those things testify of the change that he's made in our lives. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and that it may glorify your Father who is in heaven. I want you to think about that tonight as you get ready to lay down and rest here in a little bit. I have told y'all many times, it's kind of my favorite time of day. I like when the sun is setting and things are kind of settling down, the birds are singing, and just begin to hopefully just kind of tone down and relax. So as you do that this evening, I want you to think about these things. God has called me to be an agent of flavor. He's called me to demonstrate vitality. He's called us as a church to be a preservative agent that we might be salt and we might be light, that we might reflect his glory, reflect the gospel, and even in the midst of great darkness, we can shine his light brightest. So don't forget those things and think about those things tonight as you <clears throat> rest and as you prepare your heart to worship tomorrow. I know we're still scattered. I know we're still separated. We're watching worship on our phones or our iPads or our laptops or maybe you've got a way to plug it into your TV and all that kind of stuff. You're doing the best you can. But you know, even as we're scattered, we can still worship corporately because what binds us is not that we're all in the same building, but that we're bound together through the blood and the relationship that we have with Jesus and we have with one another. So as we worship tomorrow, I want you to think about those things. And I want to ask you once again before we close, please pray as we prepare in the days tomorrow, tomorrow evening, and get into next week uh, that we prepare well, that we pray hard, 
and that we're able to lead our people in a way that as we get ready to worship corporately again, that it'll be a way that honors God and wins many sons and daughters to glory. Because, you know, that's our real mission, is that people would see those works, they glorify Him, and they'd be drawn to Him. It's all about Jesus. It has nothing to do with us. Don't forget tonight, guys, before you go, you know I love you. There ain't a thing you can do about it. God bless you. Have a great Saturday night. Look forward to seeing you 9 a.m. for Sunday school, 10 a.m. for worship tomorrow morning right here on Facebook Live. And if you've missed anything, please be sure to go back. If you can't find it in the archives, go to YouTube, type in Heflin Baptist Church, and they're all archived there also, okay? God bless you. Have a great evening, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning worship.